What's the word, y'all? Welcome back, man. See, a lot of things have changed just 24 hours. We talked yesterday, and uh, there was nothing in this room, man, and we have changed dramatically. Now, the sound is still kind of trash, but we're going to put some rugs in here other than the one rug that I already got, which some of y'all might know what this is. Some of y'all might not. I'm not even going to show the rest. If you know, you know. But I did get my Michael Jordan thing here. And let me let me talk about that for a second before we get into the real topics. I talked about it yesterday uh, of, or mentioning how I spent a couple stacks on that, and people in the comments section like, Kenny, why would you say that is a one-of-one -one painting hand painted from the great Aaron, Aaron McLaughlin I think it's her name um she's great and she does some crazy work and this is a one there's only one person in the world with this exactly I got the certificate of authenticity and I needed it so I also put up like two of my jerseys from like showdowns and stuff even though I'm shooting zero percent I don't have any wins um having a custom jersey is always better than not having a custom jersey and then these things over here are things there at the old department or old house but you just never saw them because they were behind the camera and then we got this coffee thing that I'm not using for coffee I'm gonna put like memorabilia and stuff up there either way we are getting closer and closer to the point where I could call this a home man it's kind of weird to say okay so there's no basketball on for the next couple days which is um scary I guess is the word like yesterday y'all made me do work usually at six o'clock every single day i come in here and i just watch basketball and that is my excuse to not film and, and like edit videos but since it was nothing on i recorded like four videos y'all what the hey, i'm back at work that's weird but um with the nba not being back it's kind of cool just to look at stories on instagram and snapchat just to see all the players taking this three to four day break lebron was in a place where it looked like he was in a spa but also in a volcano i don't understand any place outside the united states it's all foreign to me like literally it's foreign but like i i don't really know where things are but it looks like he's he's having a great little vacation hopefully for his sake and the, and the la lakers sake when he come back he's better better i can't even tell lebron to be better bro everybody what what is the rest of his teammates doing to be better so when you get to this point of the season where there's no basketball long you know reddit kind of go a little bit crazy and um somebody had a thing named dumbest nba takes you've seen on social media and anytime i see a dumbest takes post that got over a thousand comments i'm ready to dive in and talk about some dumb takes i am not immune to those things uh as a guy that talks basketball or people that talk basketball you're going to have a bad take or two every once in a while there's plenty of videos on the internet of me having bad takes so i'm not making fun of the people that have the bad takes here i just think it's entertainment adding kd made the warriors worse Cavs and five nick wright Okay, Nick Wright. Actually, can I talk about Nick Wright for just a minute? Listen, I don't watch a lot of television, especially sports television. Um, and I know that people on TV typically say things because they, they're looking for clicks and getting interactions. And I guess I'm falling to the trap as I usually do. But I saw a clip on Twitter just just, just yesterday of Nick Wright talking about Nicole Jokic. Now, Nick Wright, I've seen him multiple times over the last season and a half just have like Bad take after bad take after bad take about Nikola Jokic. He called Nikola Jokic the worst MVP of all time. Basically, he got MVP because of circumstances. LeBron was supposed to win it, then he got injured. Kevin Durant was supposed to win it, then he got injured. James Harden got injured. Yada, 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 all of that stuff. But he took it a step too far, in my personal opinion, yesterday when he was talking about Jokic as being an MVP player, but in the All Star game, he couldn't play in the fourth quarter? How? Have, listen, I will expect a random person on Twitter to have a take about the All-Star game being blank, 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 or player not playing hard enough or not performing well in the, in the All-Star game. But the fact that this man, Nick Wright, is a co-host on a show that is on national television and he's trying to dissect the minutes played in an All-Star game? In an all-star game, that is an all-time wild take if you ask me. He talked about, oh, Joel Embiid was dominating the fourth quarter of the all-star game. And what was Jokic on the bench? And you know why Jokic was on the bench? First of all, Jokic said after the game, listen, I don't really like all-star games because I never really know what to do. Understand. I mean, you, are you supposed to play defense? Are you not supposed to play defense? And secondly, we're in Cleveland. And they decided to let Jared Allen play the fourth quarter because we're in Cleveland. Are we really up? Oh, you remember that one year Jimmy Butler didn't play in the fourth or didn't play at all in the All-Star game? Let's dissect that. You see how foolish that can sound? Oh, Jimmy Butler did it again, by the way. Jimmy Butler is just a dude that gets into the All-Star game just for the accolades, so his basketball reference thing. He played nine minutes again. Why are we not talking about the fact that Jimmy Butler didn't play in the All-Star game? He only played nine minutes, y'all. Ooh, this is the number one team in the Eastern Conference. Are they really that good? Their star player didn't even play well in the All-Star. Do you hear how ridiculous you sound? Now, I understand trying to push narratives one way or another for your favorite for MVP or whatever. You got to try to pull everything out of the hat. But there are other ways you can go if you want to say Jokic is not the MVP this season. And him saying 
that he didn't play in the fourth quarter of an all-star game is the one of the reasons why he's not an MVP player is ridiculous to me. You can say who you want for MVP. I'm not going to argue, but you can't say Jokic is less than an MVP player because of random exhibition game on a Sunday. But back to the original take, adding KD made the Warriors worse. I just don't understand that uh, that sentiment slash idea. I am definitely a dude that thinks that when it comes to building super teams, more likely than not, it might take longer than you expect for them to jail and start looking great and start to do the things. But when you have a guy as selfish, there is a reason why there was a big uproar about the Warriors. And you have one of the most unselfish superstars of all time and Steph Curry, one of the greatest players when it comes to just catching and shooting and just can light it up any single night. And Klay Thompson, one of the greatest defenders of this generation and Draymond Green and probably the greatest score of all time in the game of basketball, arguably. There, there was no recipe where that team was not winning multiple championships, let's be honest. Hey, but shout out to LeBron. Him bringing some of those Cavs teams to the finals is, is better than a lot of things on anybody's resume. But no matter who he brought to the finals versus Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Kevin Durant, they didn't really have that much of a chance, let's be honest. For me, it's when people criticize players for having too much help, but then simultaneously criticize players for not sticking around with an organization, not surrounding them with enough help. Yeah, I, I think Kevin Durant's tweet, pretty much says it all when he says NBA fans don't know what they want or something similar to that. It's it's facts, man. I've seen this argument one way or another so many times in my life that it's it's kind of weird. I mean, Damian Lillard is the prime example of this, right? And I was, I've, I've said this before, I was team uh, trade Damian Lillard, Damian Lillard, free yourself. And now I got to the point where I don't really give a damn of what Damian Lillard does in his career, right? Everybody wants to see Damian Lillard request a trade out of Portland. And I think that has a lot to do with us respecting Dame and wanting him to play for a competent team. But if he did go team up with the Brooklyn Nets, so he did go team up with this team or this team, then all of the people that was telling him to free himself was going to be mad at him because he freed himself to a good team. When in reality, anytime you want somebody to be free, you want them to upgrade, right? I still got to figure out the lighting in this room because... The camera's good, but it's not as HD as I wanted to, and a lot of that's probably my lighter. While we're sticking on the topic of Damian Lillard, let me quickly say this, even though I made a tweet about this during All-Star Weekend. I have got to the point where I don't care what Damian Lillard does because I realized very recently that a lot of the stuff that, for me and you, it's strictly basketball because that's what we watch. We watch a 48-minute game every single day, and that's how we know these players. We can follow them on socials and things like that, but we just know them as basketball players. And what I figured out in the Tyrese Halliburton trade is that a lot of the things is, is deeper than basketball. The idea of getting freed from basketball purgatory that is Sacramento sounds amazing, right? But when you really think about it, and, and you saw this in his Players' Tribune post that it was deeper than basketball. Bro was uh, a meeting with nonprofits. He was trying to be a good person in the community, trying to build the city of Sacramento. So yeah, we, we would love to see certain player get out of their city, but the reality is with Damian Lillard's case, he's been there for what, a decade now? He's built a family there. His kids are in a school district that they really like. There's a lot of things that go into it more than just like, hey, let's go hoop somewhere else. Because you got to think about it. These players are playing basketball for how many months out of the year? Is it October to, to June, July? I mean, if you make it to the final. You know what I'm saying? That's a, a huge chunk of your, of your life. There are some players, and I've, I've seen this, and I think Chris Paul is a player that does this, where they are part-time in the city that they hoop in. And I do believe it takes a very special type of person slash player to be able to do that. Because me, as a person that, that loves his fiance and future kid that's going to come out, I can't imagine being away from them that long. Chris Paul's family, as far as I know, doesn't live in Arizona with him when, during the season. So it's like FaceTimes and phone calls to keep up with the kids and stuff. I couldn't do that. I need to be able to go hoop if I was an NBA player and drive home from the arena and open up the door and there go my kids. So it's deep in the basketball. So if, if Dame don't want to be free, look at my boy out there. Y'all might see this a lot in upcoming videos. Um, if Dame don't want to be free, let him do his thing. Julius Randle was better than Pete Chris Bosh. I am confident no one has ever said that. Here go receipts. What do the receipts say? Legit question. At his absolute apex, was Chris Boss ever better than peak Julius Randle? The answer is no. And he got ratio to eternity on this one. I ain't even got nothing to say on this. It's a really bad take, and it deserves to be here. What the heck is this? I have a friend that has sworn for years and still does to this day that Steve Kerr is only riding on the team that Mark Jackson built. And that Mark Jackson was fired and replaced with a no coaching experience white man because of racism. That's very interesting. I've, I've definitely heard people say something similar to this, talking about how like 
Um, this team doesn't do anything without Mark Jackson, which I think is, is true. But I do believe there's cases where a team maxes out under the certain under a certain voice, right? And, and I've seen or listened to Draymond Green's podcast or Steph Steph Curry talking, and they basically I remember a story specifically that Draymond Green said at the very first practice of having Steve Kerr. Um, Steve Kerr was telling them, "Don't worry about getting the ball to Steph Curry because the ball will eventually find the best players." And Draymond Green said in that moment he was like, "Bro, it's crazy. Shouldn't we want to get the ball or force feed Steph Curry because he's one of the best players on the team right now?" But in reality, uh, Steve Kerr was trying to instill this this selfless basketball, selfless basketball that we see the Warriors thriving. So I'm I'm a guy that recognizes that that Mark Jackson as a coach with the Golden State Warriors was very crucial, very beneficial, or very important part to the success that they have now. But I am also a guy that thinks that Steve Kerr is a guy that came in and immediately elevated them. I don't know if they win that first championship and Mark Jackson's still the coach. I don't know. I do believe that Steve Kerr deserves to be a guy that is in the conversation for best coaches of all time. I know he ended up in top 15, and maybe he's not 15. Maybe he's top 20. Regardless, he is a guy that has done a lot to elevate his teams in his spots, except for the one year they won, like, 19 games. Like, what, what was he supposed to do with that roster? Hey, there was a lot of stuff said about that team, and, and, and Steve Kerr specifically that season. I ain't forgot. Sabonis so is the worst all-star ever, and that's from Nick Wright again? Bro, what the heck? Has he never heard of Jamal McGlure or Tyrone Hill? That's actually insane. Is this just a Nick Wright post? But I, I do know this, right? Um, I, I made a joke about that like when we were talking about Wiggins. Y'all remember that video? I was talking about Wiggins and I made that joke. But I didn't remember that it was Nick Wright that originally said it. I remember that it was somebody on TV. I didn't know it was Nick Wright, bro. Are you? That's that's crazy. Shout out to DeMontis Sabonis. I saw someone say that Carlos Booz was better than Tim Duncan. Okay, all right, all right. Ennis Freedom gave up a likely Hall of Fame career in order to fight for human rights in China. This guy right here, I'm not going to click his account. He's been blocked on Twitter for about two months now. Just the, just the stuff that he puts on the timeline. And some people I follow, like, funny retweet him, like, haha, this guy's an idiot, retweet him. And even that's not funny to me. So he got blocked a long time ago. I can't believe either James Harden, Carmelo Anthony, and Anthony Davis should have been vote okay they that's weird i do believe that james harden and carmelo anthony both deserve to be top 75 am i bugging am i is that a controversial take to say that james harden is one of the 75 greatest players of all time who are the people on the short list that have had better careers than james harden that didn't make it or even carmelo anthony that didn't i know these players don't have rings but like there are a lot of players on this list that don't have rings it's talking about an MVP player. We're talking about a dude that immediately came into his team and changed him and put them to the playoff position. An all-time leading scorer. Talking about top 10. I don't understand how you can have this argument. Now, Anthony Davis is a guy that surprised me. Like, even when that thing came out, I was like, Anthony Davis is on that? Yes, Anthony Davis is on that list. I don't understand why. All it takes where a player won't survive in a certain era pisses me off every time and it doesn't make any sense. I've said this before. When I go to the barbershop, I very rarely talk basketball. My barber understands what I do for a living. He tries to talk basketball with me or the people inside that try to talk basketball with me. And I always just basically give them one word answers because barbershop basketball talk is not the same as real basketball talk it's cool it can be fun but some people take it too seriously and the f i've heard this maybe 30 times in my lifetime of 25 years of me going to the barbershop and getting haircuts on the bi-weekly basis basis i've heard player x wouldn't survive in an era so many times and it always confuses me because based on what based on what oh they they fouled hard back then okay the, the player x will probably adjust Oh, nobody was shooting threes back then. Well, this player shoots threes. So so he would change it just early. He would change the NBA earlier. It just doesn't make sense. Or the pace is too fast for player X that played in the 80s. I don't know. People adapt to their surroundings. Basketball is still basketball at the end of the day. And I just feel like majority of players could be uniformly good across. Are we talking about the greatest of the greats? When you're just great at the game of basketball, you're able to be great regardless, in my personal opinion. Unless we talk about like 50s, 60s realm of basketball. Because... I, no disrespect to some of the greatest of all time, but I was in the arena during the all-time 75 thing, All-Star Weekend, uh, Sunday night halftime show, and they were showing footage of, like, some black and white footage of some players that made the list, and I was like, nah. <laughs> that was just my reaction. Me and, me, and, me and Mike would look at each other and be like, nah, uh-uh, nope. <laughs> oh, snap, I'm becoming that dude. Guy wouldn't last in 2022 with that slow jump shot. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know it's bigger than what they did on the court or the impact of basketball, but 
Yeah. A good one I'm seeing here, but it's not like one specific person saying it. It's how us NBA fans, when it comes to our own personal players, we overvalue them. And I'm guilty of this as well. Um, but not to the extent that some of the people say. Somebody here said Fred Van Vliet and OG Ananobi for Russell Westbrook. Who says no? And yeah, everybody overvalues their players, but not to this extent. I've seen this a lot on more specifically Instagram. NBA Instagram is a wild place. And I want to do a video of me diving into NBA Instagram, but I don't want it to come off as like jerkish. You know what I'm saying? Like making fun of somebody running the page because, but but like stuff like this, I've seen all the time. If Rob Palenka were to pull off a Russell Westbrook for Rev Van Vliet and OG Ananobi trade, get that guy his own statue outside of form, formerly known as the Staples Center or whatever it's called now. Give him his own statue, bro, because that is the craziest trade of all time. The, the biggest fleecing of all time. I think that's good enough. Those are some bad takes and my reaction to those bad takes. I need stuff to put on this this coffee thing. So let me let me know what you think I should put up there. I got a couple pieces that I just too lazy to get out the boxes, but I need more. So let me know. Oh, I haven't told y'all to enjoy basketball in some time. So I'm going to remind you right now to enjoy basketball. Actually, the Enjoy Basketball brand, we just launched one of our logos. So if you want to follow us on Twitter, go ahead and do that. We're getting the samples in for our first design going on to T-shirts and stuff coming up very soon. So if you are an enjoyer of the game of basketball, I highly recommend going over there following the Twitch or the Twitter and be out on the lookout for some some projects that we're working on.